and welcome back to part three of LA Fish Guys and Scott's Bigger Refugium. What started as a 12 inch tall open top refugium with mangroves over the last two parts has had its pumps, corals, rock, and now water mm. removed from it. Yummy. It's been replaced by a 24 inch tall 50 gallon version. Scott just finished connecting the plumbing and is eager to fill the new tank up. He's also added some new electronics to it. Let's catch up with him and see what Napoleon has added. It's a drain, but really, it's more of a standpipe, which leads to a drain. The standpipe is what will determine the water level in the tank, as the water has to rise up to the top of the standpipe before it actually drains from the aquarium, thus determining the water level. It's just like an internal overflow, only it takes up a lot less space inside the tank. Uh, the hope is, is that I've got this cut low enough that I don't need to uh, trim it at all. The return pipe doesn't matter as much because I'm going to use lock line, flexible lock line off the end there, and I can angle those into the water. So I actually decided I wanted this up higher anyways than the drain. You're going to paint that fitting, aren't you? No. That fitting is going to be buried under sand. So, try to get an idea of how, what our water level is going to be here. Make sure we're going to be okay. Put about an inch below there. wonder if I should uh, cut it down a little bit, Jim. Probably wouldn't hurt to cut it down a quarter of an inch. I think you're okay. Yeah, you add a quarter inch under the water height. and put us right around. Put us right around there. So, I don't necessarily need to use glue in this fitting, but I'm opting to use a little bit of glue because it's, if you look, it's a really shallow um, fitting that's going into. We'll just get that puppy in there. Like so. Cool. We've given ourselves a little bit extra room in there. All right. So. Last but not least is to glue the part that Jim was hoping I would forget. I'm not going to forget this, Jim. Sorry. You were thinking that, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> and nor am I going to forget the little nut. Or the nut, whatever the hell you want to call this. Alright, so last but not least. I thought for sure that he would forget that threaded collar. I usually do. So with the elbowed pipe and union fitting secured in place, Scott can now connect the water feed line that will come from the main tank's 
oversized filter system. This also happens to be where the new display refugium will drain back to. So let that set. Um, last item of business will be add about 30 more gallons. Ooh, yeah, add about 30 gallons or so to the uh, sump. Dump dirt in here. I need more water in here. So uh, grab my iPad. Shut off my. So I got to add 30 or so gallons to my tank. And uh, before I do that, I gotta make sure I shut the protein skimmer off because all that extra water is gonna wind up in the sump and when that happens, my protein skimmer will overflow. This is the point where so. Scott engages his automated aquarium, or more so, turns off the automation, specifically the water level sensors in the reservoir below. His protein skimmer is water level sensitive and the rise in water level would produce a higher foam level, which in turn would fill up the protein skimmer's cup. Now, of course, I could have just unplugged the protein skimmer, but what fun would that be? I'll just go to my outlets page here and find the protein skimmer, turn it off. off. Now I gotta go out to the shed and transfer some water in. My shed's a wee bit messy because it's obviously fish tank storage stuff and God knows what else but the way I got my mixing tank set up is I got a little button here that I push and when I push that button it tells my apex controller to turn on my mixing pump for one hour. Very useful for mixing up salt and other stuff so first thing we do push the button that turns on the mixing pump. Next thing I do is close the valve. What's happening right now is it's recirculating water in my mixing pump or my mixing tank. And now I'm going to know where I am. And that's about 15. I need to put about, I'll go right to about 60 gallon mark there. Right now, that water is being diverted directly into my fish tank, where it'll overflow and go into the sumps. Disconnect that power head. In advance of this, I turned on a heater in here. Um, also, added a little power head to make sure that the water was continually cir circulating. Uh, normally, I wouldn't worry about that because my water changes are automated in a gallon at a time it doesn't affect my temperature but dumping 30 gallons into the top of the tank that could create a little bit of a temperature change in the display so um, I figured it would be prudent to turn the heater up and warm up the water a bit before we did this So the water that we transferred in from there, um, as you can see it's raised my sump level up by five inches or so. Now I've got fairly large sumps both uh, here and my refugium on the other side, so there's plenty of plenty of room. So um, now we're gonna hook up our little union here. We gotta take you to position, which is. So everything is glued. The next step is, is to get this thing into its final resting spot. That final resting spot, quite often, is simply based on centering the tank on the wall. In this case, it involves an access distance on the back side of the stand, but also making sure that the drain and return lines are positioned securely and safely. All right, that should do it. So next step is is to start dumping sand and stuff in there. So we're going to start with the sand that I pulled out of there. And we'll 
dump that stuff in. This will get rid of some of this water. No reason to dump that in there. Call your kids over and we can play in the sandbox. Bring the cat in. I'll grab my step stool. So interesting thing about cat pee: if your cat does get into your tank before you add water and it pees in the sand, don't bother cleaning it. It's a source of ammonia. It'll help cycle the tank. Spectra Pure manufactures the best filtration systems on the market and they're one of the few manufacturers that actually make their own cartridges as well. If you're looking for a filtration system for your reef tank or fish tank, look no further and don't settle. Check out SpectraPure.com for more information. In addition to filtration systems, they also make some of the best dosing solutions on the market. The Liter Meter 3 can control up to four pumps and you can program the amount of transfer, the amount of fluid you want to transfer with the push of a button down to the milliliter. If you're looking for a dosing solution, check out SpectraPure.com. They're not only a manufacturer, they're an innovator, and they make some of the best equipment available. Have you heard of this new aquarium superfood? It's true! Larry's Reef Services blends a premium, human-grade, frozen food called LRS Reef Frenzy. And it's good enough to eat. LRS Reef Frenzy for reef tanks. LRS is the first food that contains lab-verified probiotics. And LRS makes fish frenzy for small fish and nano reef tanks. LRS is supplemented with fatty acids and vitamin C. LRS also offers herbivore frenzy for tangs and other plant-eating fish. LRS is made with fresh Carolina seafood. And LRS makes a fish frenzy in a chunky version for big fish. LRS is crafted by hand, by hobbyists, for hobbyists, and made in the USA. LRS frozen foods. Good enough for the fish, good enough for me. For more information, visit reeffrenzy.com. All right, so we also have some extra sand, live sand. Uh, I'm going to grab a scissors, but I needed more sand and really, oh, don't even need scissors. Got a rusty old razor blade right here. Let's put this stuff on top of the old stuff. It actually clearly states on the packaging of the live sand not to put it on top of existing sand. It would deprive it of oxygen. So the answer or the solution is to mix the two together. You asked about that white fitting? All done.
Now, normally, I would do a leak test on a tank, but I got this tank from myfishtank.com, and they've got great tanks, so I have 100% confidence in this tank being leak free. But if you're setting up a new tank, it's always a good idea before you plumb it into your sump and start adding salt water to leak test them first. Again, do as I say, not as I do. So they sneak in, looks like some sort of a biological gimmick, and that is leading me to wonder if I've got another bag of God knows what floating around in the sand. Only by accident does Scott end up mixing up the two live sands together as a result of looking for the package of biomagnet solution. It's like this secret, secret try that again. It's like the secret surprise in a Cracker Jack box. Biomagnet clarifier. Yeah. Well, uh, do not open with mouth. What's it say? Safe for all types of aquaria. Biomagnet will help your aquarium will help clear your aquarium water fast. Yeah, okay. All right, so we got our sand in there. I guess I should flatten it out a little bit more now that I've torn it all up. Very nice. Sand is all good to go, so I guess the next step is to uh, put our lock line water um, returns on there and uh, we can start adding some water so we can add a rock. Okay, so with any new tank, you really ought to uh, rinse them out real good. Uh, I did a brief rinsing on this thing, but I'm going to take some vinegar here, just kind of Wipe down the glass, wipe down the pipes since those pipes are painted. Um, just kind of want to do a little once over on it to get rid of any kind of chemical from the manufacturing process. Um, and in case you're wondering about vinegar in the water, you know, vinegar is not an issue. A lot of people will actually dose vinegar, it's a carbon source. I don't dose anything but vinegar in water, if you add little bits of vinegar to your thing, um, dosed properly, you can actually reduce or remove nitrates and stuff like that. So a lot of people will dose vinegar. Um, vodka is another carbon source that people dose with. Um, sugar, all kinds of weird stuff. Again, I don't dose anything. The automatic water changes my water level for the uh, Water quality is always impeccable. I don't have nitrate issues or other issues, maybe a little bit of phosphate, but that's about it. Um, got this back glass again. All right, so we got our sand in there. Doing a little wipe down. Open the valves up and get some water going in here. That way we can start putting our rock in. The so next thing to do is to Open up our valve. Any second water should start coming out of there. So tentatively, I'm thinking I'm going to build my rock sculpture kind of coming out the corner here, try to keep as much space open in front, build a little cave going in there or something. So, and I kind of probably started off the glass in this corner here, 
just debating on taking a hole saw and actually drilling um, a hole so I can slide the rock over the pipe. We'll see what my rock pieces look like and if I choose to do that or not. I probably will choose not to do that, but if I do, I've got a hole saw ready. All right, so we've got our light hung. Put the plugger in. Settings, which you did. Ah, we have light. Find our little lock line. Get that on there. Put our little Tunzi wave maker power head in. Tank. Just in a temporary spot. We still got some flow going in here. Be careful not to scratch up my black back. Note to self, be sure to remove the magnet before sliding that thing around because it will scratch up the back. All right, so we've got the water from the tank in. Um, next step is to maybe let it settle for a little bit, or I guess I could start dumping more water and scattering some of the corals about, which I think I'll do that. So let's start grabbing buckets. And so as Scott begins to return the rocks and the corals back to the new, bigger refugium, we'll return in a few weeks to follow up and see how the tank looks after it's cleared up things have settled down. So make sure to come on back for part four, LA Fish Guys, The Bigger Refugium.